Want to see me use the Android emulator for the first time? Well, watch the update for week 19. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, what have I been up to over the last week Week for week 19? I uploaded the code to GitHub for three of the Android Camera 2 uh, video app tutorials. And alongside with those uploads, also published the three articles for each of those three tutorials. Um, there must have been a slip up from the previous week before. What I try to achieve is whenever I release a video, the day after I announce that I've uploaded the code to GitHub, then the day after that I publish the article for that video as well, the matching article. This never happened for the last previous three tutorials, so I was in catch up mode. So for each day I uploaded the code and the article for each applicable tutorial. So I got up to date on the Android camera to video application. So um, hopefully I won't make that slip up again. And I'm not sure what happened. Um, it might have been a strange week the previous week. Mind you, last week's been a little bit up in the air as well. There's lots of things happening behind the scenes. I've recorded uh, another new tutorial for the Android camera to video application. That's adding audio to the video as well. So that's done. And hopefully before this video goes up, that video will have been uploaded to uh, YouTube as well. So um, it just works fine and it, was, it should be quite a short and easy tutorial to follow. One reminder to everyone is I only support devices running on the Nexus hardware such as this device for example, the Nexus 5X. I don't support any other devices and I don't support the emulator. Only this device. Um, I only have, oh, I've only got the capacity, I'm only one guy. Um, supporting more than one device means I release lots less videos. I won't be having many videos, so I only release this device. But I've, I've had lots of questions about the emulator, especially on the Camera 2 API. And in the previous weekly wrap up, I sort of said some of the issues I thought that you could have when you're using the emulator compared to using actual hardware itself. But I didn't know. I actually never used the emulator on um, Android Studio before. I'd always gone straight to using the hardware. So I was never sure. Anyway, so persistent questioning on using the emulator. People really wanted to use the Camera 2 uh, app, API application on the emulator, and I didn't know what would happen, so I spent an hour or two um, over the week just seeing what would actually happen. And so here I've actually got my application running on the emulator, and straight away you can see that there's one issue so far is that um, I'm rotated into landscape mode. Okay, so I um, Basically, when we use Nexus devices or any other device, the actual um, camera sensor and even the device sensor supports rotation, supports orientations. So you know the position. And we write code to listen to those orientations and then feed that into the camera capturing. So we hopefully get the right orientation. But obviously, there's no code for the webcam to support orientation probably don't need orientation support on a computer, it's always going to be in landscape, probably. So no orientation support, no code in place to actually support a webcam such as this. So yeah, that, that's one issue you're going to see. It's one issue I'm not going to touch, I need to support hardware devices again. I really don't want to get into writing code on the emulator that has to support the emulator, which will never get used on any hardware. I don't really want to go there. So that's, that's one issue. Okay, so let's take a picture. There's nothing actually happening. I'm getting no autofocus lock, um, so there's no image being captured. Again, I don't believe these uh, webcams, especially on uh, MacBook Pros, uh, support autofocus. So I think they've got a fixed wide angle focus. Correct me if I'm wrong. So the code where we're looking for an autofocus lock, that's never ever happening. So 
code in place for the Android Camera 2 application will not work for actually capturing still images because we're not picking up any autofocus lock. You could make it, again, you could um, sort of ignore autofocus lock and cap, well we can't actually, but potentially you could get past this stage and, and, and move on, but again, most most cameras, modern cameras, support an autofocus lock. If you want to use the camera, you want to sort of get, make sure you're getting some sort of focus in place. But on the webcam, we're not seeing that. So that was the second issue I saw. And the third issue was the deal breaker because I wasn't going to fix these problems to move forward. I was just going to see what I saw initially running. So let's click record video. Okay, we're getting a crash now. And... Uh, let me look into that crash. Basically, it's in here. Just, it's in this line here. If I select that line. Okay, so it's going to create a temp file. I'm going to have to resize. Okay, so it's going to create a temp file. If I just drop this down. So it's on this line here. We've got a problem. This is textbook code straight out of the textbook um, it's failing to create a file for our video is the problem we're seeing on the emulator um, it might not like this prepend uh, or might not like the video folder it could be an issue with the video folder we're using a sort of external public directory of environment movie directories um, my MacBook Pro might not actually be happy that directory structure and we might actually have to use a different type of directory structure. I don't know, I'm not actually going to look into this again. The code works on all hardware devices, so there is an issue with the emulator with saving to it. I did have a quick look on Stack Overflow and I didn't actually see anyone resolving this problem but people seeing the problem. So um, yeah, there's work to be done there as well. But again, we're not getting this on hardware, and we're especially not seeing this on the Nexus. So again, we're seeing at least three problems, three problems and a couple fatal ones which will not get any required functionality on, on this application, purely by using the emulator. So again, to reiterate to everyone, I only support, uh, my tutorials are only supported on using the Nexus hardware. Not on the emulator, not on the Samsung, latest Samsung, or the Sam latest HTC, or the latest Sony phones, whatever. Um, only the Nexus devices, you know, just to keep things nice and simple for my development paths. So, um, there are issues, definitely we're seeing issues with using the Camera 2 API video application on the emulator. So, um, not support it and don't use it. Un not un you can make it work, but you're going to have to write your own code just to work around all the problems we're seeing here. So it's definitely possible. Me, not going there. But yeah, if you really have to, you can keep on going there. But just remember, at the end of the day, all that code that you write is not going to be used in the hardware. So it's all, it doesn't go into the hardware. It's only for your emulator development. So there's a fair amount of investment of your time to actually get that working just in the emulator. But again, you're going to have to move forward and again, retest all your code and write more code to work on the hardware itself. So strongly recommendations, don't do this tutorial or probably most of my tutorials are not on the Android emulator. Okay, in regard to comments, I've heard many YouTubers say, especially people who are starting out, is that they promise that they will always respond to every single comment that they get. And that's their promise. But as their channel gets bigger, obviously they can't, they can't keep their promise. It's, just, it's, it's, not, it's not, not feasible, not practical. I'm the opposite. I promise that I will never ever respond to anyone's comment on YouTube. That's my promise. I just don't have the time. I want to focus on delivering material out there. And so many questions are not really directly related to the tutorial, tutorial itself. Anyway, of course, there's exceptions to when you promise to answer all the comments. Just And in my case, there's exceptions to what I will respond to. I will respond to comments saying, oh, well, look, I think there's a bug in your code. I'm using a Nexus device as well, exactly the same as yours. I'm using your Git source code. This is what I'm doing to reproduce the bug. 
this is my log file and these are steps I've gone to do and I can consistently reliably reproduce the problem. I think I'll respond to that one really quick. You know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a bug in my um, tutorial as such. So I will respond to issues directly relating to the tutorial, tutorial, especially if they're reproduced on Nexus hardware because I should be able to reproduce the problem they're having and if I can reproduce the problem, I can fix the problem. Okay. So that's one case. Another case is where someone says, okay, great tutorial, thank you very much, I got so much out of it. I will reply back in two or three seconds saying, oh, thank you very much, you're very kind. It takes me one or two seconds. Their message, one or two seconds, the whole thing's over and done with in about seven or eight seconds. So it hasn't really cost me much time and someone's gone out of their way to be polite, to express their to express their thanks and just to be a little bit polite from my side and it does mean a lot that you know for every youtuber kind comments do mean a lot and so i'll quickly respond to those generally when i have got time i don't read my comments every hour i don't really read my comments every day i do try to read them every week it's just as you can appreciate i've got so much on so that's my stance to comments but then some of you are going to say well how, how do i get in contact with you you know how, how do and there is no way to get in contact with me. There is no way, at this moment in time, there is no way to actually get in contact with me or to fire any questions outside of the actual tutorial remit that I've just explained before. But I am working on a mechanism of people have got questions outside or they do need my help. There is, I am working on providing a portal access where that will be able to happen. And I will announce that on these weekly updates and when that happens. Just so I can help people outside of the remit of these tutorials. And I'm going to put out a new tutorial series on how to navigate this channel. And so one of the videos I'm going to put out is a good approach, if you're new to Android, which videos to do one after another, such as using the camera application using intents first and then a general flow which will sort of follow the way that these tutorials have been made anyway which should help and hopefully make sense to people really new to Android. So I'm going to put out a general recommended guide on how to approach these videos in Android. I'm also going to add another video on just how to approach each, each tutorial series. Um, there's playlists out there, I've got web series on my website and from those you can navigate to where you can pull down the source code for each one and follow them in a systematic way. So I'm just going to put out a video on how to approach each series as well. So when I announce that I've released part 225th whatever episode of the Camera 2 API video series people might see that for the first time but at least they'll know how to navigate back to the first one and do each of those videos in a certain order get the code in a certain order and hopefully go f go through everything in a systematic way that makes sense i'm also going to get, make a video about using git with android studio how to pull the code down from github using android studio and how to some of you might have seen these git tag things how you can actually get the actual code changes made for a particular tutorial to work on as well. So I'm going to create a tutorial for that as well. So just to support people following it and getting the code. I still get many, many emails saying, send me the source code, send me the source code. I want zip files, I want zip files, I want zip files. Never, ever, I, in fact, I don't know what a zip file is. Okay, it's erased out of my brain. I only use Git. Okay, zip is what you use to for your shirt or your trousers that's what a zip is to me so please guys who send me all these emails i don't know what zip is but i will point you towards a git and lastly i have been working on the time lapsing on the android 2 video app got time lapsing working so and my prototyping it's working i've just got a orientation issue which might actually exist in the actual camera 2 application as well because I want to do my time lapses I think it's normal to do time lapses in landscape mode and most of the stuff I've been working on on video has been in portrait mode so I just got to look into that but time lapses are working they're up and running and working I've just got a bit more tweaking so soon you can expect to see a tutorial on time lapses 
anyway, that completes uh, this weekly episode of week 19. This is probably going to get re released a little bit later, so I do hope everyone had a great weekend and you've all been enjoying watching all my videos on my channel and, got, and that's made the perfect weekend for you. Anyway, that completes this one. Bye for now.